Hi everyone, welcome to our first lesson in our 14-day short introduction to satellite Earth observation. Now I want you to all join in with the hands-on exercises, so make sure that you are registered for a trial or you're already a licensee for EarthBlocks, and then log in using this URL at the top, app.earthblocks.io. Go to our main website, earthblocks.io, go to the pricing page if you haven't yet registered to sign up for the 14-day trial. Go and do that now. Make sure that you're logged in because we're going to do some practical exercises and I want you to do it along with me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the, the map area. This is the area on the right and we're going to choose an area of interest to look at. Then we're going to go over to this side and look at some of the, the blocks and the processing that we're going to do in the workspace. So on the map interface, the first thing we need to do is add an area. Now, when I click on add an area, you'll see it gives me the choice to draw an area. I can upload an area from shapefiles or geojsons or KML files, or I can choose from my assets. We're going to talk about these features later. We're going to start on the most straightforward place is to draw an area. Now, when I click on that, it defaults at the top here to drawing a rectangle, but you can draw a polygon if you want. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose an area that has got a collection of different types of land surface. I'm going to go into New York and Manhattan and I'm going to choose an area around about here that's got a little bit of water, it's got some urban area and it's also got some of Central Park. So that means I've just got a bit of variety to show you. But what I want you to do when this video is finished is that you can go anywhere in the world, choose anywhere, choose your hometown, choose somewhere that you do field work or you work in, uh, choose somewhere that you've seen in the news lately and take a take a look at the data there. Now, once I've created that area, I can also rename it. So I'm going to choose something sensible and easy to follow. Now we've got an area of interest. What I want to do now is we're going to do, we're going to look at the toolbox. Now the toolbox and the workspace is where we actually do stuff with the, the satellite data in that area of interest. So the first thing we need, there's a number of different blocks and we're going to talk through some of these in in the various lessons later on. But today we're going to keep things as simple as possible. We're going to go straight for input. I'm going to say use this data set and I'm going to search for some data sets. So when you click on that, it opens our data catalog. And you'll see that there's a whole range of different data here. We're going to talk through that in a different a later lesson. We'll talk in a little bit more detail about some of the variety of data there, but I'm just going to go quickly onto imagery and Sentinel-2. Now Sentinel-2 is the European Space Agency's multispectral sensor. What that means is it uses, it detects light much like a camera on your smartphone and much like your eye, but it also detects beyond that. So next, uh, tomorrow's lesson, we're actually going to look at some of the measurements that makes that are outside the, the range that your eye can detect. So we're going to start to look at some really interesting scientific uh, types of data. But for now, we're going to stick to just replicating what a camera might see. Now you see there's the add recommended blocks checkbox here. We're going to keep that checked because what means when I click on use data, it comes with everything that we need. I can just click run straight away. I can click it on the bottom of the, the workflow here, or I can click it on the, the, the bottom of the workspace. The difference only applies when you've got multiple workflows in your workspace. Now, what has this done? It has taken our area of interest, Manhattan. It's taken the time period that is the last five years. It's masked out areas of cloud automatically and it's aggregated them. So it's taken all of this data and it's squashed it together into, into one. And it's created what we're calling a true color image and adding it to the map. So that's now appeared on the map. Now, in tomorrow's lesson, we're going to look at what these other options mean down here. But for now, we're going to stick to the R, meaning red is for red, G is for green, and B is for blue. So we've got an image that looks like a standard photograph. We can see Central Park here. It looks dark and green. It's dark because it's absorbing lots of light to do the photosynthesis. We can see the, vegeta the uh, urban area is scattering and, and is quite bright, and the water surface is quite dark. So that's all it is. Now you can go to any part of the world, choose an area of interest, vary the times of, of year or the, the time period that you're looking at, and then just click run 
and go and have a look at what the data is. Tomorrow, we're going to dig a little bit deeper and find out what these other options are on the add map layer.